And I just thought I shared the same last name as Dr. King. <laughs> Welcome to Miss Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the most animated or noteworthy responses from stars digging into their lineage on Who Do You Think You Are? We'll only be covering episodes from the American version of the series. What? Oh my gosh, he's alive. That's, uh, I can't believe it. I Number 10. Bradley Whitford. Actor and activist Bradley Whitford traced his ancestry to German immigrants who made the journey from Prussia to America in 1846. It's a pretty gutsy move. It definitely was. So what happens, what happens next? He discovered that his great-great-grandfather, Frederick New, served under Ulysses S. Grant at 1863's Siege of Vicksburg, along with his two brothers. Thankfully, all three siblings survived. Frederick went on to have a significant legacy as an upstanding citizen, and reading his glowing obituary moved Whitford to tears. She will be held Monday noon here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Given Whitford's own political activism, he was pleasantly surprised to learn that he descends from courageous, hardworking immigrants who fought in the American Civil War. This idea that everybody should be able to vote makes me the most proud to be Frederick's descendant. Number nine, Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons, known for his starring role as Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory, decided to honor his late father by exploring his paternal family tree. Because family was so important to my father, I'd really like to do this for him, in honor of his memory. In doing so, he discovered that he descends from important figures in the arts and sciences. In Louisiana, he learns of his third great-grandfather, Dr. Jean-Baptiste Hacker. The 55th graduate of the Medical College of Louisiana, he documented the yellow fever epidemic in the New Orleans Medical and Surgical Journal. He was literally walking through versions of hell yeah. where he was going. Yeah. It's horrifying. It is horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. Then, all the way over in France, Parsons researches his sixth great-grandfather, Louis-Francois Trouard, a celebrated architect who worked for royalty. Parsons realizes Trouard had a similarly supportive father, making his accomplishments all the more impressive and meaningful. I don't know what I would have done. I really don't know what I would have become without my father. Number eight, Sean Hayes. In an effort to find out more about his estranged father, Ronald, Sean Hayes goes digging in Chicago and Ireland. I had a father who uh, wasn't present all the time. I think he left when I was like five, and because of that, obviously, uh, we don't have a relationship now. But what he discovers is more than he anticipated. Ronald and his siblings were sent to an orphanage, and that their father, William, was someone who faced various hardships and ultimately died of illness. Going back further, we learned that the actor's great-great-grandfather, Patrick Hayes Sr., had similarly difficult experiences and got into legal trouble. He even went to court against his sons. So my great-great-grandfather is bringing his children to court. Correct. <laughs> Hayes's great-grandfather, Patrick Hayes Jr., also had a criminal record before moving to the United States. Despite unearthing his family's less-than-savory past, Hayes was simply thrilled and amazed with the whole research process. And that's his signature. Yeah. Is this the actual ink, the actual... This is the actual document. That is amazing to me. Number seven, Zoe Deschanel. Growing up, Zoe Deschanel knew that she descended from a line of remarkable women and activists. I feel honored to be related to, the, to one of these people. They here. were very brave. Supporting uh, my mother's theory that I come from a long line of strong women, but uh, it's an even longer line than Absolutely. I Absolutely. Following the lineage of her late paternal grandmother, Anne Orr, who passed away not long before the episode, Deschanel traveled to Pennsylvania to delve in her Quaker origins. Her four-time great-grandmother, Sarah Pownall, an abolitionist whose father enslaved someone, had a farm that aided in the Underground Railroad. This is proof that your ancestor, Sarah Pownall, and her entire family were deep, deep, deep in the Underground Railroad. Wow. It was also the site of the Christiana Renaissance of 1851, 
a historical event that fueled the anger of John Wilkes Booth. While she knew about her courageous ancestors' involvement in the anti-slavery movement, Dejanel did not expect them to be such an important part of history. Because this is so much greater than just a family. This is a huge movement. Number six, Christina Applegate. Oh, Dad, this is crazy. Well, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, after all these years, I finally get the chance to find out who I am and who we are. For actress Christina Applegate, uncovering details from her genealogy was a way to provide some much-needed answers for her father, Robert, who never really knew his mother. She found that her grandparents, Lavina Shaw and Paul Applegate, had a marriage that ended in divorce and led to a difficult custody battle. Applegate struggled to read the details of Paul's alleged mistreatment of Lavina and was visibly saddened by a document saying her father was malnourished at one point. Malnutrition. I'm just angry at these two people. I'm so angry at them. While the research didn't produce the happiest of results, the experience at least provided some closure for the Applegates. The beauty of this is that you can be incredibly proud that you broke the pattern. Number five, J.K. Rowling. Controversial author of the Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling knows about epic stories and extensive family trees, so it's no surprise she has an interesting French genealogy. One ancestor she heard a lot about was her great-grandfather Louis Vallon, a recipient of the Legion of Honor in the First World War. You take grenades, to, to the fort. Oh, okay, to so he was bringing them, yeah. he was if bringing we, them we, armaments. He was bringing grenades to the fort. Decades later, Rowling was honored with the same award for literature. However, the story she heard about her relative isn't true. So, I, I mean, yes. it's really inspiring to hear what this man did, but this is not my great-grandfather. <laughs> this is not my <laughs> great-grandfather. <laughs> However, Vallon was still very much a hero and was bestowed the Croix de Guerre Medal for Bravery. Rowling makes another illuminating discovery that she comes from generations of single moms, echoing her own motherhood experience. What I'm very struck by is how many single mothers I'm descended from in this line of the family. These include her great-grandmother, Lizzie Smith, twice-great-grandmother, Salome Schuch, and three-time great-grandmother, Christine. Number four, Regina King. Regina King set out to find more information about her maternal genealogy and came across great-great-grandfather Moses Crosby, a.k.a. Moses Hughes. Moses Hughes of Northport. The blacklist was another sort of tool of intimidation. Mm -hmm. After discovering many hardships and injustices he faced, it doesn't take long for the actress to become emotional. King is shocked to see that Crosby had a prison record, but learning the whole story is heartbreaking. This was just days after his wife was murdered. Yes. Boy, they make sure they keep their foot in your neck, huh? After getting out, Crosby became a pastor and co-founded Morningstar Association, an organization instrumental in paving the way for Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. The latter is famously where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a pastor. Not only was Crosby an activist in his own right, he also aided the civil rights movement decades after. You can tell how much that means to King. To put a pin mm -hmm. in this journey at this right. place is magical. Number three, Rita Wilson. A few years after her father passed away, multi-talented artist Rita Wilson decided to trace his roots. My father, when we asked him about his history, it was one of those things where you don't really talk about it. Though he went by Allen in the States, he was born a son, Alil Ibrahimov, in Greece sometime in the 1920s and later moved to Bulgaria. Wilson travels to both countries to uncover secrets of his past, from serving in the military to escaping a labor camp. He gave five shots, and the militiamen came and spread out to search for them in the fields, but that was all. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> She's most shocked to hear that Assan was previously married to a woman named Alice and had a son, Emil. Unfortunately, both of them passed. This heartbreaking reveal understandably leaves Wilson devastated. 
But thankfully, she has the incredible opportunity to meet her uncle and reminisce about a son. It's so nice to meet you. He's really happy that you're here to meet him. <laughs> Number two, Lisa Kudrow. Who do you think you are? Executive producer Lisa Kudrow has one of the most harrowing episodes of the series. Looking into her father's Eastern European Jewish lineage, she heads to Belarus, where she reads horrific accounts of the Holocaust and notably visits the village of Ilya. And I'm so happy that she got to grow up here. And it's so pretty, and I'm also so happy that she um, got out. Unfortunately, her great-grandmother was amongst the Jewish residents who were killed there during the Second World War. Naturally, she's visibly shaken by the loaded history. Thus ended Ilya, a Jewish community with centuries of a glorious history. But at least Kudrow's journey ends on a high note in Poland, where she tracks down Yuri Barudin, a relative previously believed to be deceased. She's able to meet Yuri and his family, a touching moment in an otherwise heavy episode. It's finally good, it's finally happy, it's so, <sighs> it's such a relief. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Lionel Richie. The musician learns his great-grandfather was instrumental in the fight for civil rights. J.L. Brown was at the forefront in building a significant institution to meet the needs of African Americans across the nation. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Kelly Clarkson gets emotional talking about her heroic ancestor, Isaiah Rose, and what he fought for. I wish and I hope you know, somewhere, not only my three times great-grandfather, but all those people know, like, what they fought for mattered. Jason Sudeikis, the SNL alum, reads the grim details of his grandfather's passing. My grandfather was, uh, was more or less homeless, sleeping outside. It's sad. Martin Sheen finds an amazing connection between his four times great-grandmother and the man who tried to put her in jail. Which means, incredibly, that it was my fourth great-grandmother who was being relentlessly pursued by my fourth great-grandfather. Courtney Cox, an exciting discovery of her royal roots. Oh, so if Joan of Acre was her mother, then her grandfather was... Wait a minute. Edward the First. he's my 20th times great-grandfather, the King of England. Yeah, that's right. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Sarah Jessica Parker. In Who Do You Think You Are's first episode, Sarah Jessica Parker discovers she has connections to not one, but two significant historical events. Beginning in her hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, Parker learns about her great-great-great-great-grandfather, John S. Hodge. He shows up. Yes. And it does say he was born in Ohio, and he is the right Unbelievable. age. Unbelievable. He's a... A minor? He's a minor. The minor traveled from Ohio to California during the gold rush, arriving in 1850 and sadly passing away that same year. Over in New England, Parker finds that her 10th great-grandmother, Esther Dutch Elwell, was accused in the Salem Witch Trials, but thankfully survived. They finally decided by the fall of 1692, we've been convicting people on the evidence of the devil, and this is a terrible mistake. Coincidentally, one of the actress's most famous roles was Sarah Sanderson in the witchy Hocus Pocus. Given everything she learns about her family, SJP has some of the most expressive reactions in the series. It's crazy time. I mean, it's like you can you could see that you can, you, it's, those are like fury, you know, it's, it's madness. And she was worried about not being interesting. Do you have any shocking revelations in your family tree? Let us know in the comments below. This would be considered a uh, genealogical gold mine to find your great great grandmother who was once enslaved. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.